So this is what we're doing today. And honestly, we have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Um, car audio content on YouTube is very few and far between. I think there's literally one guy that teaches it all and he does amazing, amazing work. Um, I think Car Audio Fabrication, great channel to watch if you're trying to do it all, including build the boxes. Um, however, if you're trying to find somebody wire up these two 15 inch subs um you, you can't find that you just can't um and i'm interested ashley's interested we're both interested to see how two 15 inch subs perform in the back of this jeep wrangler now it was supposed to be two tens but we wanted to have a little fun and since we can't find really a lot of information on them um we gotta find out for ourselves. We picked up a sealed 15 inch, um, dual 15 inch sub box. Yes, I said sealed, I'll get to that in a minute. A 400 watt JL audio uh, four channel amp, a thousand watt JL audio monoblock amp. This is really the star of the show here. The Stinger Heighten 10 inch display. Um, this is gonna take this Wrangler to the next level. Chrysler and Jeep have the best radio they can find from 2010 in a 2017 vehicle. And um, we, we are changing that today with something that's quite futuristic. The amount of things you can do with this screen are, I, can, I probably can't even explain it all in this video because there's so many. Your rock lights, all of it can be configured within the radio. Pretty much this screen is a whole new epicenter. Um, for this entire Jeep, and you're about to see that happen. Um, Pack teamed up with Stinger over here um, to make this installation a breeze. Now, this radio, as you can see here, if you look at these vents, Silverados, Fords, go to their website, Rams even, go to their website. They have install kits for a lot of vehicles with this 10 inch screen, and like I said, the capabilities are just absolutely insane. Um, one of the accessories we picked up from Stinger are these amp racks. Now, they're specifically made um, for a select few amps. However, with what we're doing today, it's a little crazy. So we may have to uh, make our own holes. But, but these amp racks will make installation super clean of this whole audio system. It was almost a must-have accessory to keep the amps hidden and, um, you know, out of the way. Now, one of the reasons we end up with these two 15 inch subwoofers is that they was actually on sale. Um, they were about $70 off a sub and we said, why not? We also picked up the JL Audio C1 component sets. These are gonna give us crystal clear audio at both the dash and the sound bar and they will also get significantly louder paired with that amp compared to um, the stock speakers that are in there. Now, both of these 15 inch woofers are 500 watt, four ohm woofers. We're gonna be running them at two ohms, but because these are gonna be um, some significant um, thunderous bass, apparently uh, award-winning, award-winning bass, we're gonna have to protect some of this Jeep from rattling apart, not physically, but um, the tub and everything is very thin on these, the road noise, all of that. Um, and because this is not an off-road Wrangler, we're going with some actual sound mat. A lot of Jeep owners do go for a spray so they can still drain their tub and all that. I mean, I'm gonna leave the drain holes and everything um, open so in case it does need drained, we can do that. But um, we are going with a full sound deadening material. We did use boom mat on a uh, another sound system we just did. I was very impressed with this. Um, this stuff, this is four mil, this is the Boom Mat XL. It's really thick, really nice to work with. Um, however, with that being four mil, I believe this sound shield is four and a half mil thick, so it should be a little thicker, and um, I'm interested to see, because this is like a whole roll, not sheets, so we can go as long as we want, make install a little bit easier. <laughs> but at the end of this, this is gonna be a pretty cool um, whole system, especially with the Stinger Heighten in there, and um, two 15s in the back. This, is, this should be um, quite impressive for the absolute just uh, it's just not good the stock audio just not good can't wait to show you how those things thump how this thing works and how those things sound so let's get to it
Okay, so making quick work of it, the entire interior here is stripped down to the tub. It was also, um, we actually cleaned it down real quick. Same thing back here, it does look like a lot. Really, it, it, it goes pretty quick, and especially on a Jeep. Because this tub is made to be like drained in so many areas, like again, that goes right to the floor. But because this thing's made to be drained in so many areas, um, the carpet comes out in pieces, as you can see, like separate pieces, which all can get vacuumed and clean individually and go back in. So getting to this point really isn't too difficult, but is necessary. Most times when there's 15s put in a car or 212s or 312s, 310s, 410s, whatever it be, it's gonna rattle. You're moving a lot of air and the subs are gonna hit and make things shake. And with how things are made nowadays and how thin they are, it's not so much the tinniness, it's the echo. And this. It's how it sounds like hollow. Those that is not good for acoustics, let alone um, vibrations. But overall, this sound dampening material is going to make this a lot more enjoyable ride and listening experience. That's the thing with, you know, car audio. Nobody's right. It's what you want to do and the sound you want to hear and what sounds good to you. It's truly the way you want to build your audio system for your vehicle. Nobody's going to tell you that. They're going to tell you this is right. That's right, 1500 watts, more watts, more this, more that, louder's better. It's truly what sounds good to you. Um, in this case, we want this to sound like a concert, so, um, you know, quality subs, quality um, component sets, um, a high, high quality, beautiful display, 10 inch display, allowing all of this equipment to perform correctly and, and dampen all the sounds and make it just sound as clear and as good as it can. Um, we don't want this thing to sound like it's rattling apart. We don't want this thing to sound like um, garbage. We want the quality audio equipment to shine. All right, so it's about that time. As you can see, Ashley started the, um, well, we're gonna use these extra boom mat sheets we had inside the box because they're pre-cut and they'll fit. As you can see, they fit really well. Um, but this, I just want to give you an example. I'm going to show you before and after. So here we go. Here's, um, this side has started and then this side obviously is just raw right now. But listen. You hear that like echo? We want clean and tight bass. So doing things like this to the back of, um, your, your sub boxes, your speaker enclosures, like behind the dash. Um, roll bar getting it you know that's why they come with that um, sometimes you'll take speakers out or they'll send them with that like fiberglass like pad or whatever that's the sound dampening material on like a cheaper level but this stuff is going to give us great acoustic performance and these subs are going to sound nice tight clean and crisp but like I said listen to this so we can show you the other half when it's done give you a test here here's already with one layer you'll get the full effect when this is all done all sides and the back So about a half a day and we have this entire thing um, covered in sound shield. You can just definitely hear the difference in this tub. 
absolutely incredible this would probably be really impressive with two layers on the entire um you know the jeep or the truck or the car or whatever you do uh however we used all 20 feet of it but front and back had all the drain plugs cut out got it cut out the seat bolts but it it this is this is going to be crazy and then back here in the tub as well this is just nuts this is going to be absolutely just spectacular but we just got the uh, sound bar out because now that everything is in fact sound shielded and sound dampened it's now actually time to start putting this stuff in and literally like i said this is a big project and especially if you're going to do it you know the right way it's going to take some time but it'll it'll definitely be worth it so what we got here is the sound bar out as you can see the uh woofer and their three and a half inch tweeter but we're going to take this to a six and a half um woofer and the jl audio one inch tweeter we're going to take a component set um and put it in here on both sides and then also in the dash so this will sound really good especially with that component set that close to um, one another but this is going to be great the c1s come with an inline crossover and um that's gonna that's just gonna be great and honestly on this side because the c2s they come with a giant like giant crossover that we'd have to mount somewhere else um, but this is really going to help here because we could fit that crossover right inside the um, sound bar we're going to start getting these um, installed then we're going to make our way to the dash and obviously get the subs installed in the box um, but we're going to set another component set here and then in the tweeter up there um, and those will pair great with those and then obviously um, i think i'm going to run the sub amp underneath the driver's seat and the um, speaker amp underneath the passenger seat because the factory speaker plug goes down that way um, so we'll be able to run our new speaker wires down that way as well to the uh, speaker amp and then just have to run the um, the speaker wire going to the sub on this side and that'll be very clean Okay, so I'm getting ready to put the speakers in the sound bar here. Now, if you're doing a factory install, I mean, you could take it down and put your um, like boom mat, dynamat, sound shield, whatever, in the holes and just put the, the speakers in with the factory adapter and then um, hook them all up. You could do that if you're gonna run it off the stock head unit. Because we're running these off of um, this four channel amp here, the four component sets, well the four component speakers, we're gonna run that off the four channel. We're gonna run all new speaker wire. A lot of people, I was just looking on the forums a second ago and it literally frustrates me um, because like I said, car audio, you will never find an answer you want. You just won't because literally the forum I was in, just trying to figure out speaker wiring colors, the dude was talking about how you should just remove the sound bar and put speakers up front. And I'm like, I don't know. Like I said, forums are literally a mess when you're finding information, so I'm trying to help whoever out as I can doing this um, too. What you're gonna do, get yourself a zip tie. These are big, gigantic zip ties. You can go to Home Depot, pick up a pack of 10 for I don't know what. Clip that off. And this is the best wire fish you'll, uh, um, the wire fish, the best wire fish you'll ever have. It's firm yet flexible yet does what you want. You can you can push on it. I couldn't get the speaker wire through this thin channel inside the uh, sound bar here. Here's the other end and here's the other end, and you'll be able to tape it up there, and then we can pull this speaker wire through, and then we'll be able to bust all four um, wires out of the sound bar straight to the amp and. Um, we won't have to go through all these connectors and tapping in and figuring out what's what because there is a lot of wires in this sound bar um, and all that. And especially with these crossovers, it's going to make it a lot easier um, just to run our own wire and not deal with the factory stuff. It'll probably end up working out in our favor as well because the more connectors you pass through, um, sound quality does degrade little by little. So um, straight to the amp is what we're going to do.
Okay, so we got the whole sound bar um, pretty much put back together. We got the set of C1 components put in here, ran with our own speaker wire. Pretty much drilled the hole in the side. Everyone seems to be on the, you know, on the forums worried about this. It's literally the only way you could do it. I mean, you could somehow make your own plug here and rip the whole harness out if you wanted, but it's really not that bad. But left the whole factory harness intact in there. Pull your, um, Speaker wires through, silicone the hole shut, um, and you're good to go. Over here, I've got it taped off. This is the driver's side speaker and the passenger side. We gotta put connectors on this. Just, you know, kind of replicate a factory one, really. But put connectors on this so this sound bar can be removed. If we wired it from here straight to the amp, that would be a pain if we ever had to take this out. So um, I'm gonna put some connectors on that and throw this back in. I went through and did this. Um, back in the day, I used to be able to sit there and throw like subs and all this stuff in in like an afternoon. However, now um, I got this going on where I make nice speaker wire harnesses for um, the inside of the sub box that no one will ever see. But um, next step here is we're going to get the subs installed into the box. Um, connectors on this, sound bar back in. Ashley got these all... Um, boom at it inside make these sound a lot more solid got all that done we're gonna install the components into this i'm trying to decide here for the um other part of the component set here um that's got to run up to the tweeter i don't know if i'm going to use what i got here or um you know kind of make a four-way connection here or still install it the normal way and give us a second hole here as well for that um crossover to come out other than that pretty much ready to go in here we got the whole dash taken apart. We're going to get that beautiful Stinger 10-inch screen installed um, along with all the other stuff we need. And we can honestly start putting this all back together. Throw the new speakers in, get all the carpet back in, and then start placing things on top of the carpet like the sub box, the amp rack, the amps, get all that stuff um, situated. But that's what we got to do now to get this thing bumping ASAP. So uh, let's get to it. Every single day I feel it.
Okay guys, so that mesh you've been staring at for this entire video has turned into um, a beautiful masterpiece here. Um, 1000 watt amp over here, 400 watt amp over there. It's like back in the day we would just throw the wires wherever and let it run. Um, but now it's like doing all this to make it clean and neat. It, you know, it is kind of an art. It does look very, very nice and put together. But let me tell you, doing the the sound mat, the, the prettiness and all that, it, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Look at this thing. It's literally, it's gigantic. It's just gonna be a whole new experience than that uh, Uconnect that's been in here. Now, I believe this Stinger radio actually has an amp built in, and that meaning a lot of aftermarket head units. Um, I believe this is 55 watts a channel, so this isn't necessary because it'll give your, you know, your factory speakers or your aftermarket speakers a little juice if you didn't really wanna run both amps. And then under the hood, just keeping it clean, nice and tidy. And then um, you guys watch me make all of these power cables and everything today, because pretty much you'll literally pay hundreds of dollars for a buy amp install kit that's actually oxygen free copper, OFC copper, both speaker wire, um, ground wire, power cable, all of that, not copper clad, I mean, true OFC. You'll pay hundreds of dollars for a buy amp install kit. Um, and if you just buy the spools, and it does take time, but you're literally paying half to a third of the cost of a, a, a kit all put together. Um, and in the end, it looks really, really nice. Oh, I was looking for that. I was like, is there a light? And, and that's how it goes. You can tell us how you feel, but we already know. Which rockin' lot of weed me in the back. Cold place with a back. How back you we so good? I don't wanna pay. I might pull up and serve you a pound on a four wheeler. <laughs> You guys, <laughs> we're just messing around, but like, come all the way out here. I wonder if you guys can still hear the bass. First of all, that's amazing. That's crazy, and the distance. Plus, we gotta get the top on because the 15s aren't hitting fully. Um, I mean, they're hitting more like in the parking lot than they are in the Jeep because of the air. This video you've been watching the entire time of this thing completely stripped down. Here we are back again. You can't even tell we did a thing and that's awesome in the um, world of car audio because look at this. Still got all your back seat space. It's a little dark in here. Slide the seat all the way forward. And look at that fit right there. And also, you can't even see on that side, but boom. Check this thing out, guys. It's absolutely nuts. And um, this thing has different like software updates and everything else. Um, you can attach rock lights and a bunch of other lighting and different um, accessories to this screen. So that's literally sick. Compared to what this Jeep had, this screen is absolutely a game changer. And honestly, no matter what car you have, like I said, go to Stinger's website. They have a multitude of install kits that are made specifically for other specific vehicles. This does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, have an XM antenna. They're down here. This is what we were doing down here, switching out the old 12-volt 
Apple CarPlay right there. So the old 12 volt outlet is no longer. The plug is back there. This is now an Apple CarPlay outlet that works seamlessly with the Stinger head unit. Also, if you didn't catch this before, it integrates fully with your Jeep, especially the JK and the JL. You have all like the um, off-road stuff, low tire pressure threshold, you can change that. You can have off-road cams, GPS position, drivetrain, gives you angle, all that stuff transfer case where where we're in we are in too high performance zero to 60 times this thing ain't the fastest but that 392 might need to use this page that's for sure um and then there's all your gauges so if you want to run with a screen full of gauges look at that beautiful and here we go back to the vehicle info all four doors are open as you can see let's see i'll close this one boom look at that amazing that is a amazing and then the, both of those um tires are at 30 psi and those are at 32 so we can air those up um all in all it is very impressive um screen is very responsive this is complete complete game changer full integration seamless this thing looks great and the best part is this is bigger than the eight inch you connect they put in the JLs now. I guess YouTube and copyright free music, I got one that's copyright free, so we're gonna let this rip. Hey, green light, it's time to go. I don't wanna live life fast or die too young. Die too young. 100 miles per hour, I might crash cause a good die young. Yeah, a good die young. Push it to the left, can't go no more. Red light, no way, So now we're on the um, kind of main road here, getting up to about 40, 30, 40. Um, with the windows down, obviously they're cracked right now. You can hear the, um, the tires, but let's roll these windows up. I'm trying to tell, I mean, it's definitely quieter. It's just like the normal, it's definitely quieter. I'm sure if you did two layers, this thing would be absolutely like scary, but also, it doesn't help that it's a Jeep with a fiberglass top because a lot of sound comes in through there too. But um, they do also make panels for that, but. It's definitely quieter. It's just like. You can really only just hear the motor. You can't even hear the tires as much. Right. But just even being in here, it sounds less echoey. That's nice. That's real nice. 